welcome to the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. I have an imaginary friend. His name is Norman. Hello! <laughs> hmm, sounds realistic. That's right. Very realistic. He's an idiot. <laughs> Who? You hear that? Oh. I hear everything. Uh, but anywho. Also joining us today is Jacob. Hey, everybody. And I'm a specter that Terry Bob he exists. Oh, no. Anyway, in today's episode review, we are going to review um, the My Little Pony... Sorry, My Little Pony, Tell Your Tale, Season 1, Episode 9. It's T-U-E-S Day. So, how do I set up this, uh, summarize this? So, anyway, uh, in this episode, Easy Moonbow is excited to celebrate the unicorn expression... Uh, expression? Expressive? Uh, expression of Sparkle Day, or T-U-E-S Day, with her friends. But they are more preoccupied with her usual morning... Sorry, with their usual morning routine to pay attention to her. Will Easy celebrate alone or with her friends? Or will her friends just ignore her per usual? Ooh. So, before we start the review or discussion, um, first impressions are in order and silver. What do you think? Well, I mean, it's a, it's a fun short episode. These Tell Your Tales, they, they either have to make a big impact or they get... Uh, forgotten and moved on pretty fast but this featured the introduction of senor butterscotch so it's rather uh rather important oh uh, from the wiki or from the episode guide it seems that somehow this episode is important <laughs> uh, well kind of figured it also sh it's also talking about the uh, so the importance of imaginary friends hmm I see. So that's that's your take on it. Fascinating. All righty then, uh, Jacob. What about you? Yeah, uh, I've got a few questions, or maybe one question that will come up later. But I don't know. <laughs> mm, what? Yeah, I got. I'm gonna save it for later. Okay. All right. So. As for me, this episode was cute. It was it was it was a nice watch. And it was just it just reminded me of SpongeBob. That's all that's all I have to say. It reminded me reminded me of SpongeBob. Mr his his bubble friend I forgot what's his name, but still it just reminded me of that episode and that episode's um what you call this uh, plot twist was something else. Uh, so, anywho, if you have not watched this episode, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. So, instead of going for the normal play-by-play, -play, I'm going to go for a more discussion-based thing where... Silver, you, you mentioned that your, your take on it is more of the importance of imaginary friends? Yes. Uh, got pulled up in front of me. Uh, why imaginary friends are good for kids. And Izzy, at her heart, is just one, is a big old kid in some ways. She has that innocent creative power. Mm. But it says here, 50% of young children have imaginary companions, whether completely pretend or in the form of a doll or stuffed animal that they really like. Now, a lot of people tend to stigmatize this but they're, it doesn't mean that they're lonely or shy. In fact, they tend to be creative and highly social. Uh, let's see here. Imaginary friends can be great comfort to your child and helpful to you. For example, the imaginary friend can start conversations. They can make transitions and difficult routines easier. They give you a window into the creator's mind. And they can inspire you to be creative. 
Now, all those... Now, within the context of Izzy, if you try to put her in a void or a bubble, she fills it. I mean, it was that way, but we saw within the uh, movie when it seemed like no one would be... uh, would associate with her she filled it with creativity and imagery and uh what was it that teapot set that tea set that was meant to be shared with friends she was always building for that day mm. and but this imaginary friend is is sort of help her keep that celebration and energy upbeat while her friends in some ways catch up and on a side note, uh, you, with Easy's imagination and whatnot, like uh, recently with the episode re- that we review where she was stuck in a box, like there's nothing for her to see, but still she can just use her imagination to have a good time. It's, it's, what is it? No cage can hold me so long as I have imagination. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's also on her end too. Uh, the unboxing of Easy, if I remember right. <laughs> and she inspires that creativity in others. The other significant thing of this episode is that Sunny pulls out her journal with all the notes and questions she uh, demonstrated during the movie. Mm. And honestly, I wish they had more of that. I yeah, still have a question regarding that. Hmm. See, uh, it's, I don't know if it's sort of a contradictory or something, but, well, apparently the TUSD is supposed to be uh, for the, wait, what did we say it was again? Uh, Celebrate the, Your Sparkle Day or some such? Uh, Unicorn Celebration Day or something. Yeah, yes, an, ex- an expression thereof. Yeah, and it's un- specifically unicorns, apparently, but, well, let's just say, considering the movie, that this is uh, happening after that, um, well, I think we all know what unicorns were like pri- prior to getting magic, so I'm having a bit uh, difficult time uh, Imagine that if this was a natural holiday, the unicorn celebrated, or is this just uh, easy making a holiday up for herself? Uh, mm, mm, he's got a point, Silver. Well, let's consider that uh, in the movie they had the stigma slash, what would you call it, urban legend, that a Pegasus can steal your sparkle. Mm-hmm. So a sparkle, whatever it was or is in their culture, was established. Hmm. So I I think the sparkle is somehow independent of magic, but they still have some concept of it. I see what you mean. So basically, it's one of those things where even though they got... (laughs) Oh my god... I'm not even gonna say it. All right, okay. And I, I'm not gonna even go that route. All right. Even though they, it's been so long that they've lost it, and they kind of just do it through because of tradition. And once they got it back, it's real, and now the celebration is more meaningful for them. But one thing I do remember, right, from the movie, Izzy doesn't have friends, right? No, she does not. So uh, let's I, make sure well, let's make sure it stays that way unless um, uh, there's going to be a certain comic that's going to ruin everything. Oh, you mean the one with Violet? Uh, let's not talk about now, Silver. Let's, <laughs> let's say what we, for. Let's cross that bridge when we get to it because I'm going to have a lot of impact on that one uh, anyway. Please, oh, please. She she's dramatic. Mm. Uh, all right. So that, that's a, that's a fascinating take. That's a fascinating take. Uh, to be honest, Silver, um, what I got out of it was more of a cultural sense. Uh, be, being away from home, being away from uh, like-minded people or ponies and so on, 
uh, and being the only one of your kind in a place of where, where a place where uh, not many of your kinds are there is kind of uh, isolating and having the the sense of oh I want to celebrate this with my best friends is special to me but having them not realize or not how do I put this not realize or not celebrating it with you is kind of soul crushing but uh, it's true and but then that's where Izzy's creativity imagination sort of rallies bolsters her yep. she's like okay if I can't celebrate with my with my friends I'll make a friend and I and I do I do love that it's alive alive <laughs> and I will call him Senor Butterscotch uh, well, yeah, I mean that, that, that's a good name. That, that's a good name. Uh. Actually, for some, it keeps conjuring up that scene from Gargoyles where uh, they make cold stone. Xanatos is all like, "It's alive, alive!" I've always wanted to say that. <laughs> oh man, you say gargoyles, and the theme song just pops in my head. <laughs> uh. Here's a Disney remake they can do. When are we going to do that one? Mm. Well, the comics, they've got comics out. I think I'll leave it at that for now. Oh, I guess, I guess. Oh, it didn't, there was, there are whispers of a live action gargoyles. Oh, no, please, no. Oh, no saying yes. that. I... Maybe if they get, sorry. If they get Jim Henson's Creature Shop behind it, that'd be something. Oh, I mean, that, that'll be something, yeah. But yeah, I mean, uh, for, for, if mm, but for me, um, honestly speaking, I I I'm more of a I I see this more of a cultural thing where, uh, poor Easy doesn't have, uh, friends to celebrate uh, T U E T T ah T U E S T yeah, but at the same time too, right? Is this not the only unicorn in Maritime Bay, right? Mm, well, let's see here. There's the oh oh. Actually, it's the guy from Fool Me Once, isn't it? The the magician. Fool me isn't once. Isn't he what a North it? Pony? Oh yeah, he was. Dang it! I know I there are there unicorns is. in Mar Yeah, I don't think there are any other unicorns in Mar Time Bay. Only Pegasi. Probably because they have a lot easier time flying there compared to the unicorns. Very possible. Uh, the the only other so, what you call this uh, unicorn creatures are the animals. Oh yes, well I don't know if you can gather enough bunny corns to have a uh, to have to have a celebration with them. What about raccoonicorns? And they're gonna go Although, hand in hand with these later down the line. They're just gonna steal uh, your stuff. Oh no. What? Well, well, what are you doing? Oh wait. Uh, I'm actually just looking at Fool Me Once. There are some background unicorns, but that's about it. Mm, so, oh man, now now that you mention it, now now that you mention it, like you have to ponder: is this a easy holiday or is this? really a uh, what was the uh, town that the po unicorns are in oh man Bridalwood Br uh, yeah Bridalwood oh is it a Bridalwood a specific holiday well I think it's Bridalwood specific if it's in uh, Sunny's journal but here's the thing if it's in Sunny's journal the info that she might have got it from is easy well yeah. We we may never know. Yep. That is also true. So this this is a very fascinating tale. But anywho, Jacob, what about you? What what do you think of uh, everything? What's your take on it? I mean, I don't know. I think pretty much was just well, I just said everything. Although I would say that well, I just say um, did she? Uh, 
if uh, the whole US day is for uh, unicorns and their friends, why did she decide to make another unicorn? I mean, couldn't she just uh, draw uh, a couple of eyes and a smile on a plank of wood? <laughs> well, then maybe plank. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, yep, I was thinking about that one. <laughs> oh god, we're all <laughs> But considering it's easy and she has a lot more creati- creativity going on, I suppose she... Well, it would make sense she'd try to make something far, a bit more familiar and, uh, well, more. So yeah, um, I think that's it. Hmm, alright. Uh, but... But what's your take on it? Like when when you first saw it, when sorry when you first saw the episode, did you felt did you lean in more to, ah huh, this is more a cultural thing or more of a um this is imaginary friends bit. I don't know. At, fir- at first, uh, at first I was yes, yeah, I was at first I was sort of leaning on the well this is cultural, but after a while I started to think. Maybe this is just easy thing, considering, well, she, there really aren't any other unicorns that she's hanging out. And, well, let's just say that there's another unicorn that, fi- that finally joins uh, later down the line. So mm. that she's not the only unicorn anymore. Also true, yeah, but, that, but that, that's later. That's for future us to talk about. Yeah, in that case, I still think this is more of an easy thing. <laughs> Mm, all right, okay, that, that's one way to see it too. All right, all right, all right. So, Silver, is there anything that we have missed or you would like to discuss? Well, there's more posy irritation, <laughs> which doesn't still doesn't come off as deserved to me. She's not the most approachable of ponies and sometimes a little too eager to delight in someone else's struggles. But she's far from what I would call an antagonist. Mm. So the suffering streak never really appealed to me. I mean, it could be a haha poor person joke kind of thing, like how Squidward is to Spongebob. Didn't they talk about Squidward hanging himself? <sighs> I don't know, man. Spongebob goes to strange places. What, you mean that joke where uh, he, he put up a rope saying he, he can't feel any happiness anymore and then it turns out that he was pulling up a uh, birdcage. <laughs> oh, that's good to know. But I, don't know, I just remember seeing a lot of uh, Squidward hung himself posts. I mean, if it's the internet, you should really just know. Yeah. Well, but what one? If it's... It, if it's Spongebob, I take it with, uh, I'm just not sure of anything. <laughs> uh, that is also true. Uh, one thing that I like to mention or point out for this episode is we get Transformers. Oh, yes. The, the Pony Optimus figure gets a little debut. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that is awesome, man. Honest, when I started playing and I uh, originally uh, heard that, I thought he said uh, Autobots. But then I turned down the subtitles and it says Autobots. <laughs> uh, yeah. No comment, man. Like, still, that that is just pretty awesome. <clears throat> so now I wonder what the rivals are called. Oh, you mean... Deceptitrots? Oh, that's... Money. Money yeah. there. Money there. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, but getting back on track. Uh, once everything's done, right? Like, once Easy went through her imagination, spent her mana to just lift the friend and do stuff with it, uh, she got home and everybody remembered. And like you mentioned before... Um, Sunny went through the book and remember what day it is, and they they celebrate um, T U E S Day with 
her. And she just says, I got to do this all again with real ponies? Awesome. <laughs> Sign me up. And one thing I took out of it is that Izzy is optimistic as sunshine. <laughs> and I'm trying to remember if there's any pony in G4 that this, uh, that this that is this optimistic. And the only closest thing I can point my finger at is Pinkie Pie. Yeah, pretty much. But I think that there's enough difference between them that she's not just Pinkie Pie 2.0. No, no, no. no. Like, there, there's a... <laughs> Uh, on, at 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 first glance, you you get to see like oh, uh, rainbow. Uh, when you see easy, it's just another rainbow. But once you see them, what you call this? Once you see them in action, oh, they're totally different. Um, Zip here doesn't really want the spotlight. She she just wants to do her own thing at her own pace and just enjoy herself. And yeah, man, like that that is totally different from uh rainbow and when you see uh, izzy here compare it with Pinkie pie there's similarities but they're totally different and i i feel like that's good that's a good thing because we we get more character which we call this we get more characters out of it we we get more character differences we get more character interactions and if they do interact with each other is going to be different. But well, if we can work out the legal troubles, do explain. Uh, what is it? Uh, the hub eventually became what was it? Discovery Family, mm-hmm. and Discovery has a legal claim on. Friendship is magic, not like total ownership, but a stake in it. So you can't feature characters from Friendship is Magic in G5 well, without no. he- hefty legal trouble. Well, not not so much hefty legal trouble, but they have they would have to pay to well, uh, feature the characters. Yeah, licensing and whatnot. So that is something what yeah. Hesper doesn't want to do. So wait, uh, the, that Which, that rule comes. Uh, sorry, that, that rule you mentioned before, Silver. It's specifically for TV shows, right? Well, as as far as I know, the only company that has a legal right to uh, show characters from both generations is IDW. Mm. So. Let's hope. <laughs> let's hope they do a little bit more of that. Oh yeah, that that'll be awesome. And I'm gonna veto we review that when that comes out. <laughs> but anywho, um, let's wrap it up because uh, is there anything more to add before I ask for final, uh, what you call this for uh, final thoughts? Mm, nothing for me. Check out. I'm good. All right, cool. So let's go for final thoughts. Uh, Silver. Oh, it's a fun, silly episode that really shows Izzy's creativity and ability to keep keep on smiling even when a lot of us would just sulk, which could be inspirational. Though it's okay to also admit you're not feeling terribly happy. Uh, I, get, I get it. Yep, yep. Good lesson. Uh, Jacob? Yeah, it was an okay episode, and well, it basically reinforces again that uh, uh, poor little Liz is all by herself. I mean, he has been all by herself. So, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. And as for me, uh, this, this episode was okay. It was pretty entertaining, and it, it just reminded me of SpongeBob, that... that one episode uh, called Bubble B- Bubble Buddy, yeah, Bubble Buddy, and it, it was it the how how do I put this? The difference in um, writing for both is very fascinating, and 
uh, in Izzy's episodes, she she pull it off in a way where it's not annoying for the viewers and also the ponies living in that world where she's not an annoyance. And just just looking at how Senior Buttercup is, he, he, butterscotch. He, sorry, butterscotch. Uh, he's just pretty okay. He, the only person I think they annoyed was uh, who was it again? Silver. Posey. Yeah, thank you, uh, Posey. I, I think that's the only pony that they annoyed, but in SpongeBob, somehow Bubble Buddy created a riot. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> yep. Oh, boy. So, yeah. But anywho, uh, that's our that, that, that's our thought. So, let's wrap things up. If you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions of the show, you can contact us at com. You can reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at show, And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? On YouTube, Twitter, and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill, where and on the YouTube you can find links to my Patreon and Kofi to support after the fact. Uh, plus, I have a weekday pun channel if you if you enjoy that sort of daily torment, <laughs> and I know you do. Awesome, awesome. You can deny it all you want, but I know. I mean, I I think people do subscribe just to uh, have ammunition. For their daily lives, but they won't admit it. <laughs> there you go. Uh, but no convention, Silva? Oh, well, uh, Winnie City is fast approaching, but I haven't heard on my panels yet. Ah, going then? You are? I intend to, yes. Mm. Well, Going then, you are. <laughs> <laughs> that came out strange and I just ran with it. <laughs> Uh, Jake, where can the good people find you? Uh, you can find me on the DeviantArt under the username Yakapontorka, under the Twitter username Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested in reading the story to more rising, you can find it on thinfiction.net. And if you're interested in reading an original story featuring anthropomorphic animals in medieval fantasy setting called Tales of the Ashes, you can find it on the talesoftheashes.com. And there's going to be a new uh, convention in my country on the 25th of May. Uh, so yeah, if anyone is you, anyone uh, any of our listeners is living in Slovenia, then uh, feel free to visit. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Go do so, guys. Uh, it'll be a blast. Uh, if you want to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you'll get a week's early access to review discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, i like to thank Jacob, Lucky Knight, and also myself. Like, thank you so much, guys. You are awesome. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vaquil. I'm Jacob. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of MBS Show. See ya. Adios. Bye-bye. So how does this imagination thing work? Mm, let's see here. Well, all right. Picture an elephant in your room. Uh, oh, wow. There's an elephant in my room. How did that get there? There we go. That was remarkably simple. Make sure it doesn't start a stampede. Oh, no! Oh, <laughs> no!